I was chairing a session on um, Spreisel or Dizatinib at one of the satellite symposia on Monday. So Dizatinib has been available for more than 10 years now for patients with chronic myeloid leukaemia and the session was providing an update on the two main studies which were Decision which was a, a large uh, Bristol Myers Squibb sponsored study and also Spirit 2 which is an academic led clinical trial in the UK comparing Dizatinib with Imatinib in newly diagnosed chronic phase chronic myeloid leukaemia patients. So the, the main results that were discussed within the session were around efficacy and uh, toxicity. So firstly very fairly similar results were obtained for both clinical trials showing a superiority for dizatinib in terms of depth of molecular response. However, this didn't translate into improved overall survival in patients at the five-year time point in decision and the two-year time point in SPIRIT2. The final endpoint for SPIRIT2 is five-year overall survival, so that has yet to report because the median follow-up is currently only three years. The second part of their talks focused on toxicity and there was quite a lot of discussion regarding pleural effusions on dizatinib and management of pleural effusions and what physicians should be looking out for. So in terms of the symptoms that patients should be looking out for, for patients with pleural effusions, they should be thinking about breathlessness, um, patients developing coughs, this can sometimes develop after a patient has had an infection and the pleural effusions don't always happen when patients start on dizatinib, they can occur several years down the line, so it's just something that physicians and patients should be aware of um, in the longer term, that um, they can occur after four or five years of therapy.